You know, ladies and gentlemen, being Canadian means a lot of things, but we've had numerous icons that passed away in recent years, and our country has never been the same uh, since they departed from this moral coil. Of course, John Candy, Stomp and Tom, and this guy, who I consider one of the best storytellers and one of the best Canadian singers of all time, one of the key members of the, the Mamas and the Papas, a great singer, a great actor, a great bon vivant, the man who will reflect his home province of uh, Nova Scotia and the Lower Sackville area beautifully, the great Denny Doherty. Now, he passed away in 2007, and I really don't think enough tribute has been given to him for being one of the greatest voices in Canadian history. Uh, we have to celebrate him every day. Now, born Dennis Jared Stephen Doherty on November 29th, 1940, in Halifax. Was a Canadian musician. Uh, he was a founding member of the 60s musical group, the Moms and the Papas, for which he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 98. Born in Halifax, he was the youngest of five children. He grew up in the north end of Halifax and a devout Catholic household. His father was a dock warder worker and a pretty good tuba player. And Doherty has described his mother <coughs> as a housewife and mystic. Doherty and his three friends, Richard Sheenan, Eddie Thibodeau, and Michael Connell, began their musical career in 1956 with a band called the Hepsters. Two years later, they disbanded. In 1960, still in Halifax, Doherty, at a young age of 19, along with Pat Lacroix and Richard Byrne, began a folk group called the Colonials. Now, Columbia Records signed the group several months later, at which time they changed their name to the Halifax Tree as part of the folk explosion. The band recorded two LPs that had a minor hit entitled The Man Who Wouldn't Sing Along With Mitch, but broke up in 65. Now, in 1963, Doherty ex ex established a friendship with Cass Elliott when she was in a band called The Big Three. While on tour with the Halifax Three, Doherty met the great John Phillips and his wife, model Michelle Gillian. A few months later, the Halifax Three dissolved, and Doherty and her cupness, Zal Zanoski, were left broke in Hollywood. Elliott, who had by this time was in love with Doherty, convinced her manager to hire them. Thus, Doherty and Janoski joined The Big Three, increasing the number of members to four. Soon after adding even more band members, they changed their name to the Mugwumps, which soon broke up due to insolvency. Janowski went on to form the Loving Spoonful with the great John Sebastian. Now, about this time, Phillips' new band, the New Journeyman, needed a replacement for tenor Marshall Brickman, who left the group to pursue her career and get this TV writing. Doherty, then unemployed, filled the opening. After a new journeyman called it quits as a band in early 65, Elliot was invited to the formation of a new band, which became the Magic Circle. Six months later, in September 65, the group signed a recording contract with Dunhill Records. Changing their name to the Mamas and the Papas, the band soon began to record their duo debut album, If You Can Believe Your Eyes and Ears. The Mamas and the Papas song Creaky Alley briefly outlines her his this history. Doherty sang lead on the Phillips penned California Dreaming, released in December 65, prior to release of the du debut album early in 66. Now, if it's the first time you're hearing about the Mamas and the Papas, can you imagine this? you got a guy from Halifax who looks like a typical maritimer. you got John Phillips, who was heavy on drugs, wiry, but like, you know, can play anything. Michelle Phillips, who looks like a reject from a cheerleading squad, and Mama Cass in her moo 325 pounds soaking wet, could sing, sing the roof off and sing beyond the roof. So it wasn't your typical rock and roll, folk, or pop band. Now, in late 65, get this, Doherty and Michelle Phillips started having an affair, which led indirectly to the first breakup of the Mamas and Papas. They were able to keep it secret during the early days of the band's success. When the affair was discovered, John and Michelle moved their own residence. They had been sharing a house with Doherty, a good place to run around on your best friend's wife, and the band continued recording together. Eventually, the group signed a statement in June 66 with the record label's full support via a letter, to my knowledge, uh, firing Michelle from the band. She was quickly replaced by Jill Gibson, girlfriend of the band's producer Lou Adler, and Gibson's stint as a mama lasted two and a half months, which is talked about in um, uh, the documentary, the very popular one. Due to fan demand, Michelle was allowed to rejoin in August 66, while uh, Gibson was giving giving a lump sum for her efforts. The band completed her second album, titled, titled simply The Moms and the uh, Papas, by re-recording, replacing or overlaying new vocal parts by Michelle Phillips over Jill Gibson's studio vocals. So again, this is where it gets funny. Uh, Papa John Phillips had also declared that Michelle was having an affair or fell in the bed with Gene Clark of the Birds. But we don't know if the affair with Doherty either was discovered and she was 
she dropped and moved to Clark or anyway, it was just a complete uh, mind numbing. Uh, he said, she said. Now, again, after a string of hit singles, many TV appearances, successful third studio album, The Mamas and Papas Deliver in March 67, and a group's appearance and development of the Monterey International Pop Festival, which had been, of course, organized by Phillips and Adler. In June 67, an ill-fated trip to England in October fragmented the already damaged group dynamic. They were touring in support of uh, uh, the uh, uh, their... Uh, uh, they're a good buddy, and it didn't work out, and the, the British press really, really uh, uh, despise Mama's uh, performance and what was going on. Uh, because of this, Elliot quit after a stinging insult which, from John Phillips, although she returned to complete uh, her parts to the group's fourth album. They were uh, supporting Mackenzie's, uh, uh, you know, Cal- not California Dreaming, be sure to wear flyers in your hair. Didn't work out. Now, the she... Returned to complete her parts for the group's Ford album, The Papas and the Mamas, which was contractually obligated, which was finally released in May 68. By then, Michelle had given birth to China Phillips uh, in February 68, and a formal statement had been released announcing the group's demise. Of course, uh, different uh, stuff had happened there, because China Phillips hooked up with uh, two of the Brian Wilson uh, daughters to make uh, China Phillips a very popular band. Now, Elliot and Doherty remained friends after the band's breakup, while Elliot had a hit solo show. She eventually asked Doherty to marry her, but he declined. Uh, he said publicly, I didn't know much of Judge was, and like I said, I liked small women, and I loved her, but I wasn't in love with her. Now, we released a few solo LPs and singles of his period, two of no being 1971's What You Gonna, what you gonna Do and 74's Waiting for a Song, the later of which went on release in the States. Featuring both Michelle Phillips and Cass Elliott on background vocals, the recordings would be Elliott's last as she died of heart failure in her sleep on July 29, 74, after a sold-out run in London a few months after the record was finished. She was doing a lot of TV at a time and doing kind of a, a vaudevillian kind of popish tour. Now, Doherty was stunned and saddened and attended a funeral several days later in early August, along with John and Michelle Phillips. Now, in 82, he joined a reconstituted Mamas and Papas consisting of John, his daughter Mackenzie, and Elaine Spanking McFarland, who toured and performed old standard new tour tunes written by John. Doherty later, later produced an off-Broadway show called Dream a Little Dream, which was a narrative of his perspective of the story of the Mamas and Papas. It was well-received and garnered favorable reviews. The show was a part in response to John's controversial PBS documentary Straight Shooter, the true story of John Phillips and the Mamas and the Papas. Uh, it featured music from the group and focused on his relationship with Cass Elliott. Now, from... 9301, he played the part of the harbor master as well as voiceovers of the characters in Theodore Tugboat, Boat, a CBC television children's show chronicling the lives of vessels in a busy harbor loosely based upon Halifax. Always an actor, and he, CBC was good to him. As in 99, years after he had these variety show, he played Charlie McGinnis in 22 episodes of the CBC television series uh, Pit Pony, which would be still be available uh, through streaming uh, services. Now, in 2004, he appeared on Sharon Lois and Bram's 25th anniversary concert special, 25 Years of Skin of a Rink, that aired on CBC on January 1st, 2004. He sang two songs with the trio, California Dreamin' and Who Put the Bomb. One of his last appearances, of course, was in the Canadian TV series Trailer Park Boys, Season 7, Episode 10, which was season finale, as an FBI special agent called Ryan Shotneck. Film was completed just shortly before his death in early 2007, and the end credits dedicate the episode to him. Now, Doherty uh, was married uh, once, had three children, a daughter, Jessica, from a brief first marriage, and a daughter, Emberly, excuse me, two marriages, and a son, John, from his 20-year uh, marriage to his second wife, Jeanette, who died in 98 from ovarian cancer. John Doherty was temporary in the Canadian ska punk band, Hill Scarlet. Now, Doherty died on January 19th, 2007 at his home in Mississauga, a very sudden death. The cause was not immediately known, but he had suffered from kidney failure following a surgery for an abdominal, abdominal or aortic aneurysm. His funeral service was held in St. Stephen's Roman Catholic Church in Halifax, and he was interred at the Gate of Heaven Cemetery in Lower Sackville, NS. Shortly after his death, a document. So his maritime storytelling side really came through with all the interviews, one with uh, for the straight shooter, one with uh, uh, Hannah Gartner, 
from the fifth estate. But his discography, if you can find it, it was quite good. He did a number of singles to Claudia on Thursday and Tuesday morning in 71. What You're Going to Do in Gathering Your Words in 71. Indian Girl, Baby Catch the Moon in 73. My Song, Indian Girl, again in 73. You'll Never Know in Good Night and Good Morning in 74. And Simone in 1976. Now, the albums included What You're Going to Do in 71 and Waiting on a Song in 74. Now, although he did a lot of uh, uh, kind of acting on stage, he only had a a few official uh, jobs. He did a lot of radio work and other work for CBC. But in filmography, Windows, he played Billy Cooper in 84. 92, he played played in Hurt Penguins in 01 a night. Tidor Tugboat, 130 episodes, 93 to 01. 97, Elvis Meads Nixon, he played Vernon. Pit Pony, Charlie McGinnis, the television film version. The Real Howard Spitz in 98. 99 to 2000, Pit Pony, 22 episodes. Prince Charming, a TV film in 01. 25 years of Skinner, Skinner Rink, where he played, of course, Denny. 2005, This is Wonderland, season 3, episode 4. And, of course, 2007, The Trailer Park Boys, uh, episode A Shit River Runs Through It, the final role, of course. Now, what does Denny Doherty's... Uh, place in pop or rock or folk history have well not to sound weird not too many canadians were pop and folk and rock stars at the time so when the loving spoonful came on blood sweat and tears uh steppenwolf mamas and the papas they probably played them so often because canadian content the canadian viewers are going to watch the Guess Who and the Johnny Cash. So he was like a standard bearer for that great Canadian folk pop music. Murray McLaughlin, uh, Gordon Lightfoot, Joni Mitchell, uh, Neil Young. But for what his voice was, you know how hard it is to sing California Dreaming and uh, the different pop songs? Mama was a different version, but uh, the Mamas and Papas would not have been a Mamas and Papas without Denny because you needed a great female singer like Mama Cass. A great male male singer like like Denny, and you know something it was all natural. You didn't hear any overdubs. You would always talk about the fifth voice when you're recording. Now, one of the first bands I ever listened to was the Mamas and the Papas, and when my dad told me that the lead singer uh, was from a place that was only 400 miles away, I couldn't believe it. I thought this guy was from California. I said, "Dad, he's singing California Dreaming." Well, I said he's probably thinking of Halifax when he's singing this. The John Phillips and the Michelle Phillips wrote this wrote this song together, or one was inspired by the other because Michelle said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm cold and stuff. But it was just like Roger Daltrey sang for Pete Townsend, the, Denny Doherty sang for John. And I don't think he ever forgave Michelle for sleeping with Denny, but he forgave Denny for sleeping with Michelle. It's very uh, strange, you know. Bros before holes, as we say. Not saying Michelle Phillips is different, but uh, you know she, the track record. The track record is there. That's what I'm saying. But Mama Cass, did she die early because of a broken heart? We don't know. If Denny would have married Mama, can you imagine the music they would have done together? Would you not have paid thousands of dollars to see Denny and Mama with all her invited guests on stage? to do duets and different stuff. It was just never meant to be. So when he passed away, only 66, ladies and gentlemen, uh, tremendous loss for the game music industry. Just like John Pan- Candy passing away, Stop and Tom, and, and Leonard Cohen as well, don't get me wrong. There's icon, like, you know, the Canadian flag with our, our maple leaf in the middle? The points of that flag, there's different entertainers that reflect to where you are. If you want to talk about comedy, it's John Kennedy at CTV. If you want to talk about country, it's Stop and Tom and KD. If you want to talk about romantic pop, it's Leonard Cohen. But straight ahead, beer drinking, party time, and longing for somebody, it's Denny Doherty. And like I said, it was a fun band. But you could talk uh, to Denny Doherty. We would tell the same stories all the time. But you ask him a question, leave him go for five, ten minutes. Eh? Uh, I remember laughing my head off when I saw the PBS documentary. They did it too. <laughs> You know, Maritimers, you can tell stories, and let me tell you, he was a great storyteller. My only regret, I never met him. So this is for you, Denny. So if you like what we're doing here with our vintage CBC podcast, let us know with a like, comment, subscribe, or share. And don't forget, sing along.